All right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, doing a video analysis today, doing a couple of them, trying to bang them out today. But I wanted to just remind everybody, please subscribe to this channel. Just click that subscribe button and that notification bell right down below. Um, that way you get notified of all of these video analysis sessions that I do, along with all the other videos that I have coming out here. It is track season, so I am flooded with people looking for free video analysis. The way that it works is the people that do the paid ones, those come first. Those take me about an hour each to do, so I have to bang those out. Um, and then at, once I have time, usually later in the week, once things calm down a little bit, I can get to some of these free ones. And I always try to do the ones that have something different in them, something that hasn't been seen recently or haven't seen before. And this is one of those because we have a lefty. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Left-handed. Left, left-handed people don't throw. I don't know how to coach left-handed people. That's all I hear from coaches. It's like, what happens if you have a lefty? Oh my God, lefties, they're the worst in the world. Dude, it's the same thing as a righty. All the stuff is still the same. There's nothing different. Uh, about a lefty throwing compared to someone who's right-handed. There's no tricks. There's no position differences. It's all the same stuff. Instead of using the right hand, they use the left. Instead of the right foot, they use the left. Instead of the left foot, they use the right. It's all the same thing. So we're going to take a look here. We have a glider. All right, so let's take a look. A couple of uh, times in a row here first to start out. We'll start looking for some things. Uh, you can kind of see he's really over-rotating at the finish. And it looks like he's shifting weight from his left to his right. Yeah, he's got a wide stance, too. This is going to be tough because we're not really in a throwing circle. We're just on a cement pad. So it's tough to see where kind of the middle of the circle would be. Um, but it looks like there's kind of a, like a dark spot right here, kind of like where maybe people throwing discus have been rotating with black shoes on with the soles of the shoes being black. So let's take a look here and see. Okay, here's the middle of the circle. Let's take a look where his foot lands. Yeah, his foot's way, way too wide. But this is a good one too because if you don't have a circle or if you don't have the circle kind of measured out, how do you know where the middle is? How do you know where the front is? How do you know where the back is? You've got to make some type of reference mark. So take some type of sidewalk chalk. Take something and figure out, again, it's a seven foot diameter for the shot. So that's a seven foot diameter. So three and a half feet back, that's the middle of the circle. Draw a straight line. Make a line in the front of the circle. Make a line in the back, seven feet away. Okay, so here's what I want to look at. You can already tell just when he lands. Remember, power positions I always equate to kind of like being a seesaw. You want to be balanced on the power foot. And you can just tell he's got his left leg kind of crashing down to the circle. And behind that power foot, you've got kind of like his, or behind the knee, I should say, kind of have like half of his shoulder, his head, and the shot. So not a whole lot of weight on one side of that seesaw, but a ton of weight on the other. So we're probably at this point going to see some weight shifting. And we're going to see sort of that idea of like, <clears throat> kind of falling onto the left. Yep, there we go. So watch where the left, where his body is when the left foot touches. Okay, left foot's grounded, and look at where we're at. Super, super wide stance. Okay, we need to get that foot underneath and keep the shot behind. Now he's doing a good job of keeping the shot behind the knee, but you can see here just how his uh, joints are stacked. You've got the ankle here. Draw a line straight up. You've got the knee here. Draw a line straight up. You've got kind of the belly button or the middle of his hips, the middle of his pelvis, right here. So they are stacked kind of like a pyramid. One, two, three. Instead of being on top of each other. One, two, three. So we're dealing with a major weight shift here. Okay, and that major weight shift is going to lead to, again, not having the foot on the ground. You can see here how the foot kind of lifts and slides a little bit. See that? That means it's no longer pushing. It's just dragging. And he's not able to push. You can see here, like maybe if he put his foot there, okay, if he put his foot right here, then he'd be able to keep it on the ground. 
but his feet are so wide when he lands in that power position. Feet are so wide. Now imagine if the foot, let's see if we can find something here. It's really nothing to kind of go on, but if you put the knee under the hip and the foot under the knee, you're going to be right here. So let's take a look. Yeah, kind of like right there. This is tough. Kind of like right there. I'm going to keep moving the cursor back. But yeah, there's, there's where the foot would be. Pretty much right there. So that's where we need the foot to land. That's where we need that power foot, the left foot in this case, because he's lefty. The power foot is going to go right inside. Here's the middle of the circle. Okay, middle of the circle is somewhere approximately right there. His foot needs to be on the inside of the front half of the circle, the inside of that midpoint. Okay, so we've talked about this before. What are we going to work on? Well, let's work on a few things here. Let's talk about some different stuff maybe. Let's work on a few things. Number one, draw a line right here. It doesn't have to be a curved line. It can be a straight line. Three and a half feet back, I want you to draw another line straight across. Three and a half feet back, draw another line straight across. There's your seven foot diameter. That's your seven foot circle. Where the three and a half foot line is, I want you to put something. So it looks like kind of back here, you might have a sweatshirt on the ground. You can roll up a sweatshirt or lie a sweatshirt flat on the ground. Try to go over it. You can take a jump rope or a piece of clothesline or a belt or a toe strap, one of those nylon straps that you can get at like Home Depot that you see in the back of people's trucks. Lie one of those flat across the circle or just use that chalk line as a reference point and drive over it, glide over it. At this point, you're not getting far enough back. We've got to get across that circle a little bit better and get that foot just inside the front half, just over that strap or that line that you drew. Okay. So that's going to give you a little bit of a target to get to. Okay, the other thing we got to work on is your right foot. So when you are gliding here, I want you to focus on keeping the left foot lower to the circle. So you can see right here, the left foot is a little bit lower than the bend in your knee. Okay, so don't let the, the right foot go up in the air. See how the knee is bending and the right foot is going up in the air? Don't think up, okay? We want to think back. So imagine here if you just extended your right foot and boom, placed it on the ground. It would get down a heck of a lot earlier. This path, you can trace the path of the foot. We're going from maybe this is, let's say about, oh gosh, I don't know, eight inches off the ground, okay? The foot goes down, down, down. It's almost scraping the ground at this point. Still very low. And then it's up here. Up, 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 up. Level. Down, 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 down on the ground. So trace that left foot. It's going from an up position to down to up to down. So it's got a long path that it needs to travel. And if it's coming kind of up to down to up to down, it's kind of like when we talk about discus in the back of the circle, that sort of extra up down. If you've got to wait for that left foot to go all the way, or that right foot to go all the way up and all the way down again, it's going to take too long. The length of the racetrack is too long. Okay, if you have two cars that are going the same exact speed, so two cars that max out at 100 miles an hour, okay, and you have one track that's one mile long, and you have one track that's two mile long, two miles long. Obviously, if both cars can only go 100 miles an hour, it's going to take twice as long for the car on the two mile long track to finish because it's a longer racetrack. If you start them at the same time, one is going to finish way after the other because the racetrack is longer. Look at the path, look at the racetrack that your right foot is on, that your blocking foot is on. Up, down, up, 
down. Look how long that took. Okay, so that's the second thing. Third thing is let's keep that left arm back a little bit longer. So right foot, I'm sorry, power foot, blocking foot, and then we're kind of wide open. You're doing a great job keeping your chest and your eyes back, but you're starting to bend that left elbow, a right elbow. Jeez, I keep screwing this up. Bend that right elbow. Let's keep it nice and long. Throw it out there and then pull it in. But you're doing a great job. You just, you're missing that connection with the ground because your feet are just so wide. The feet are so wide because you're not gliding far enough back and your right foot, that blocking foot, is coming down really, really late. So those two things are just sort of contributing to having your feet too wide. And if your feet are too wide, it's going to be hard to keep them on the ground and apply any type of power. Okay, so this one's a little bit different for a few reasons. Number one is that he is left-handed, so like you heard me doing, you mess it up a little bit from time to time. You're so used to coaching righties that you forget lefties. So that's why you want to use terminology like power foot, blocking foot, throwing arm, uh, blocking arm, um, you know, chest back, eyes back, things that it doesn't really matter um, kind of what hand the, is the person's dominant hand. If you say power foot, you know that's the foot that's underneath you. Blocking foot is the foot near the toe board. Throwing arm or throwing hand is the one that has the shot in it. Blocking arm, blocking hand is the one that does not have the shot in it. All right? So use those terminologies. But for this guy right here, make sure we're getting over the middle of that circle. Make a mark that you can hurdle over. Keep that right foot, keep that blocking foot nice and low to the ground. Don't let it go up and down. And that should get you in a much more closed, much more narrow power position so you can apply power longer and throw the shot a lot farther. All right? That's it from here, guys. We've got a few more of these to do today. But as always, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. And I will talk to you soon.